Hello everyone, my name is Steven Zapata. I'm a concept artist, illustrator, online art teacher, and former instructor at Art Center College of Design. I would like to introduce you to my new drawing course, Form from Imagination, a course designed to help you draw with confidence from your mind. Maybe you wanna be a professional illustrator or designer. Maybe you wanna be a master with a pencil. Or maybe you just wanna be the best artist that you can be. Beautiful goals but it's not always clear how to improve the work that you do from imagination. Over the past six months, I've taken all of the little eurekas, tips, and essential exercises that gave me confidence drawing from my mind and compiled them into a sequential course. We start with the absolute foundations, covering the scientific nature of light and shadow, how to hatch, how to create flat tones, how to render spheres and cubes. And step by step, we move through combined shapes, complex shapes, organic shapes. We cover how to simplify extremely complex subjects like the head into basic shapes so that you can handle them more easily from your head. We look at how to understand and treat details. And by the end of these 14 chapters with over 50 video lessons, you'll be ready to do complex designs from your mind with fidelity and energy. And all the demos are done in pencil on paper, so you can do all of the assignments even if you don't have a fancy digital art setup. But I also have demos, instructions, and modifications to the assignments for those who do want to do them digitally. Here's how it works. Go to formfromimagination.com and sign up for the course. Download the assignment book and start watching the lectures. Do the assignments at your own pace. Take your time with them and use this self-study to develop your patience. When you're done, post your assignments in the exclusive community hub, and I'll personally critique your work with drawovers, diagrams, and advice. I want you to know, this course is no joke just because it's online. It is challenging content, and it is more complete than it would be if I was teaching this class at an art college as I have before. If I was teaching this class in person at Art Center today, I would just play these videos in class, knowing full well that they're the most concise, focused, edited, step-by-step -step way to convey the material. So I'm serious when I say, this course isn't just a substitute for a college-level course, it's better than a college level course. And you don't have to pay thousands of dollars per credit and wind up hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. So thank you for checking out the course. Thank you for watching this and for your support. And thank you for drawing and making your artwork. The world needs it. I'll see you soon. What a I sing it like that to test my audio levels. Not because it's necessary or important to sing like that, but simply to test my audio levels, to see where I'm peaking, where my voice lies, what is the right position for my knob, for my audio knob, for the position of my audio knob. Greetings. Greetings. Hello. Friends, what is up? Hello to Johnny Pearson, Saman Kucher, Mach 22, K. Sig, Alistair Cargill, Anarud Bonsal, Disc Breaker, Multi Known, Multi Nun, Abdul Malik, Emma Blomskog, Sansia. My, your names are kind of smaller now because all of my stuff has reset so I'm not zoomed in on my my old man eyes can barely see what all of your really slick online handles are these old man eyes were not made to read really cool online handles Kareem his puffness Ray Balderstone the indefatigable Sam Lamb Andres A Anarud Bonsal Corey Krumnacker Jenny Craddock Literally at the beach, but I can't miss a long-awaited stream, says Jenny. That's incredible. When there's beach to be beached, still cannot avoid the long-awaited stream. It's all poetry around here all the time. Jelly, Rachel Steinhardt, love gone wrong. <laughs> love gone wrong. Ouch. And Mr. Sparkle. Oh, don't forget, Quan, Quan. Let me try to read the caps. Cool. 
Kuzoga. I think that's how you pronounce that handle. Kuzoga. I think that's probably it. Hello, everybody. Back, we're here. We're streaming, we're live on the internet. Um, I haven't been here in a bit. I'm gonna draw a little bit. Uh, if you have anything you wanna ask or anything like that, you throw it right in the chat. And um, I don't know. I see that uh, construction work is likely to begin uh, literally right now, <laughs> everything was clear um, right when I started to stream, but I see the construction work is probably about to begin right across the street in my neighbor's backyard. But uh, just so if you hear anything, but if it happens, we will deal with it. We'll close the window and we will sweat. Sam Lamb says, Lightbox this year. I am indeed planning on attending Lightbox this year. I am going. How is everybody? Oh. Oh my God, Steven, you gotta update us. Update, update, update y'all on what? What, what? what could there be to update on? What's more important than drawing? Than just drawing. There's nothing more important than just drawing. There's no, this is the update. The occurrence of drawing is always the most relevant fact. All other things in life, impermanent, suffering, non-self, Drawing, sweet, self-justified, freeing, relaxing. I haven't drawn in a bit, been very caught up. Yeah, I was sketching here and there, but like a nice long session. It's been a little bit, so I am drawing from reference right now. I'm just looking at some naked bodies from New Masters Academy Reference Library. And freely drawing, accepting of mistakes, no expectations of excellence, not particularly inclined to put the pressure on myself to nail anything at the moment. Whatever comes out, comes out. Keeping the priority straight, number one priority, peace. Hello to David Dubois. David Dubois. Sansilla says, Stephen, I want to know everything about DC. I, I, I wish I could tell you everything about DC. <laughs> um, a time will come in the near future, hopefully, where I can tell you guys all of that stuff. You know, we can make a fun story out of it. We can have laughs, we can have moments of excitement, but um, that time is not now, unfortunately. Some things must occur with discretion. And this is one of those things. For now, I am sure a time will come where the moment for discretion has passed and we can just recall these stories and recount them happily, but for now I cannot. I apologize, dear audience. Cannot give specifics. I can tell you that I am very glad that I got to go to DC and advocate for rights and protections for artists in the era that we live in. I have no regrets. And um, yeah, I'm very glad that I got to do it. And my outlook is optimistic. Indeed, indeed. Oster says, Stephen, welcome back. I was wondering when I'd see another one of your streams again. Here I am. Here I am. Living, existing, drawing. When I can give more specific updates on some of those things, I will probably make a video for that. The, the, just so that, you know, it's kind of out there in one place where everybody can kind of watch it and just get the info instead of repeating it over and over again. Um, 
But uh, as I said, I really, I don't know when I would be able to do that. Hi, Steven. I hope you are well. David Castillo. How are you, sir? Nice to hear from you, man. I'm doing really well. I hope you're well, too. David and I go way back, way back. Went to high school together. Damn, son, haven't seen your stream for a while, says Chady on fire. Haven't been streaming for a while. Haven't been streaming for a while. Had various AI-related things to do, dear audience. And then that transitioned directly into a little bit of rest and vacation. And now the time for AI is temporarily done. And the time for rest and relaxation is, oh, very temporarily done. <laughs> I let myself rest and relax quite a, quite a bit. Hello, William. I'm happy to be back. I am very happy to be back. I see people advocating for Cottonwood sketchbooks in the chat. I use them for a long time. I think they're great. Great little sketchbooks, those. Emma says, Steven Zapata art. Man, I was watching some old recordings of the workshop I attended, and it was the most motivating thing that week. I'm very glad to hear that. I am very glad to hear that. Memories of the workshops always fill me with happiness as well. And I'm feeling very motivated to help others with art. Very motivated indeed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do stuff, man. I wanna do in-person stuff. My, my desire to do in-person stuff has been increasing. I'm gonna make a retreat center. That's no, no small task. Not gonna be easy, but uh, I just feel like it's inevitable. I want a, a place where people can go, where they can inhabit a particular space of artistic values, free creation, no pressure, self-compassion, self-generosity, while still having access to instruction and support. Really would like to make a place like that. That has definitely been on my mind lately. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, I want to say that for anyone interested in form from imagination, I am planning. Now, I don't have hard plans right now, but right now, soft kind of. I am planning on making a no feedback version available probably next month. So I just wanna put that out there for anyone who is uh, seriously weighing getting the course and you um, are hoping for a different price or you're okay with no feedback or for some reason you prefer no feedback, um, I am planning on making that available in some capacity sometime soon. So please allow that to percolate into your brains 
and influence your decisions. May that be a conditioning factor for you. I think Steven is on newsprint right now. That is correct. Yes, this is smooth newsprint. Sam says, oh crap, I should go back and watch the workshop recordings. Yeah, I mean, a lot of info there. A lot of info there. They were long. <laughs> Those workshop days were long, man. There's a lot of stuff in there. Stephen, we need to celebrate your return with some singing. Yeah. Shed some followers, right? What, what have I been... Uh, what have I been singing lately? All right, this is stupid, but uh, I may have uh, talked about this one when uh, it first happened, but we, we've had it stuck in our heads bad. Um, my wife said, uh, Stephen, you got to come over here and help me make the bed. And uh, I was just feeling uh, petulant and childishly defiant. So I, uh, impromptu, of course, uh, composed this incredibly catchy song in the vein of a children's TV show song. It goes... No, you can't make me, you can't make me make the bed. No, you can't make me, you can't make me make the bed. So yeah, I sound like a very helpful husband, don't I? <laughs> very helpful. Always carrying my weight with the chores. <laughs> Missed you guys in chat, says William. Everybody in chat is very nice. Very, very nice. What you think? Con appearances? I am planning on going to Lightbox. I'm just going to uh, attend, you know, like walk around and stuff like that. Steven's going to open a temple of drawing. That'd be the vibe, hopefully, you know. You just kind of shuck off all of these commercial concerns and get back to the core. Right down to the core. No feedback version sounds amazing, says Anarud, but will it also have an upgrade to feedback later functionality? Yes, thank you for asking that because I do that. That's one of the main things that I'm trying to figure out right now how to do that administratively, uh, and I think I will be able to do it. Yeah, thank you for asking that. I forgot to mention that. Yes, the if it all goes the way that I want, yes, you'll be able to get the content, and then when you are ready, um, the feedback would be available as a, as a separate product, and that, that would basically be access to the feedback community that we already have going. Estras, hello. Kessa says, could you stream more often? This is my top two favorite art streams. Uh, I'm gonna try, you know. I've been away for a little bit, but uh, I do love to stream. I'm happy it is the week of my return. For now, we'll be back to the usual three-ish times a week. All right, let's move to another reference. Let's see, what do I have in this folder? I'm just gonna pick something. It's not much in here. Anyone like Mark Ryden? I like Mark Ryden. I mean, I'm not like a, a huge follower or fan or anything like that, but uh, I saw a show of his paintings. If I remember correctly, Art Center, uh, that's where I went to school. They once had a show of Mark Ryden's stuff in the gallery that they have in the school. And uh, I went and checked that out, and I really liked it. Great stuff, I thought. When does the unusual start? The unusual is always here. The truth, such as it is, 
must always be available, lurking right under the surface, or else it is not the truth. Turn it now. Let me move this up here. I'm gonna get. Let's not get too precious here. Let's just draw one thing into another. Stephen, where would you say your anatomical understanding is at? One to 10? 15 easy, dog. Dude, 15 easy, dog. And if you bring any master artist into the room, they would concur. They'd look at the stuff, they'd say, 15 easy, dog. And I'd be like, 15 easy, dog? And they'd be like, 15 easy, dog. And then there'd be some dissenters. There's always dissenters. Little people with little minds. They'd be like, it's not 15. And then me and the other master artist would be like, it's 15 easy, dog. And then suddenly the dissenter would have their mind open. They'd be like, hold on a second. Is it 15 easy, dog? Me and the master artist would be like, it's 15 easy, dog. And then you'd be like, it's 15 easy, dog. And then we'd all sit around and we'd say, it's 15 easy, dog. I don't know, you're a beginner every day, you know? Some days, I, I always talk about uh, the sort of soft hierarchies of, of beginner, intermediate, and master. They're just ways that you feel day to day. Um, there's days I feel like a beginner, there's days I feel like an intermediate, and there's days that I feel like a master. And to me, I'm just like, I truly am that thing that day. So I have days where I'm a beginner, uh, which are still fun. And I have days where I'm a master, and those are fun. And it shifts. All things change. All things impermanent. Damn, that's an odd angle on that leg. How the hell is he doing that? Mm. It's tough when you've got hard points like a foot and a hand interacting in the reference he's like holding his foot with his hand and he's lifting both it's like when you've got those two hard points if you don't get the angles right on something like the hand and when there's weird foreshortening going on it's just like guaranteed you're gonna get an answer that doesn't make any sense see that goes there that goes there That's better. Next reference. Next reference. Miles Bloomfield says, what makes a good shape? It's a shape that fulfills the goals of the picture that you're working on. There's no, uh, there's no good shapes in the abstract, I don't believe. You can have goals so specific, a cultural view so specific, uh, an industry so specific where you can sort of make rules for shapes, where it's like these shapes usually satisfy the goals of this industry, this culture, these goals. But even in the most rigid of those circumstances, they are still just appropriate shapes 
for those milieus. In the ultimate, there is no such thing as an objectively good shape. Would you want there to be? Wouldn't that be boring? If there was disappointing, small-minded, petty little answers like that in art, would you really like that? Sure, you'd be excited for a day or two because you'd be like, hoo, 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 I unlocked the secret of shapes. Now my arts will be better than everyone else's. You'd have that for a couple days and then it'd just get boring. It'd just get boring, you know? Art is lively, eternal, undefinable because there's no objective answers like that. And it's amazing how when you say stuff like that, there's tons of people who are willing to leave it all on the line to disagree with you. It's so important to them that there be objectively good things in art. That's like, all right, man. You do you. Steven, are you going to stream same time and same days? Uh, I don't usually do same times. Um, I do usually do same days though, which are Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. But I tend to sort of follow my moods and stream either in the morning or in the afternoon, depending on the other stuff that I got on the to-do list. Steven, our regular streams back starting with this live stream? Yep, that's my plan. I just had a lot of travel in May. May was a very travel heavy month. Sam Lamb says, I do want to also plug the Mol Moleskin art sketch. Well, he says Molstein, but I'm assuming he means Moleskin art sketchbooks, which Steven also got me into. I do love them. That with uh, Faber Castell colored pencils of their basic or my basic mechanical pencil are so nice. I love them, they're great. Big fan of the moleskin sketchbooks. I used to draw in the cottonwoods a lot. I used to have a bunch, but uh, then I just, um, I don't know if it's still the case, but there was a period there where they were expensive to ship if you didn't live in one of the places where you could buy them at a store. It suddenly made them much pricier than the base price of the, um, Sketchbook, I don't know if that's still the case. This was a while ago, but um, during that time, I then went to uh, Moleskin Sketchbooks just because they're, you can get them anywhere, at least here in the States, you know what I mean? But like all sorts of even just uh, non-art focused stores have them. And um, then I just got used to them again. I say again because they were my Go to sketchbooks for a long time, then I switched to the Cottonwoods and I switched back to the, Mols to the Moleskins.
Israel Texeria says, hey, long time no see. How are you doing, Stephen? I'm good. Top notch. Very good. Very good. I'm very lucky to be doing very well. What about you? How are you doing? Sylvester Lazarus says, good to hear you, Stephen. I'll be lurking and work on a picture. Very good, very good. Wonderful. If you see me drawing, that is my invitation to you to also draw however you want for however long you can. No required mode, no required subject, just draw. Spend a little contact time with drawing. Precious drawing. Important drawing. Sancia says, Stephen, did you and Carla draw with the congressman? I saw a video of your DC trip. We did have a little event for staff and for Congress members where we set up some drawing stations and we did draw in front of them. And maybe a few staff and representatives threw down a few lines. That was a fun event. It's always fun to draw in front of people and to get people excited about drawing. Let's go to next reference. I need another sheet here. Oops. I'm actually drawing in one of the pads we used for that event right now. <laughs> yeah. We needed to buy a couple more drawing materials while we were there, and uh, I was the only one who didn't fly into DC, so. I got to keep the excess stuff. Uh, let me mute for a second while I sharpen pencils. Ray Balderstone says, hey, Stephen, do you think that there is any skill that can't be learned outside of art school? No, I don't think so. People were drawing great stuff before there were art schools.
The camera audio was on? I have camera audio? What could you possibly have been hearing? I turn this off. Oh yeah, now you okay. I don't know if I can All right. See, I always forget that um because of my setup, my microphone actually maintains a little power and charge even after I turn it off. It doesn't, I, I, it doesn't have a mute switch on it, so I just turn it off at the source. But I always forget that. It has a latent charge and it'll still pick stuff up. So that's what you were hearing. This is the only microphone I've ever had where that happens, so I never quite got used to it. So apologies if I burnt out anybody's ears. Apologies about that. The fun little whine as it loses power is neat. That's funny. I gotta give it a listen sometime, see what it sounds like. David Castillo says, after going through the gauntlet myself, art school mainly, mainly felt like a tool for networking and access to the POV of experienced professionals. Learning the craft is all on you, not a diploma. Indeed. I always say here, when people talk about art school, it's like, if you, it's worth it if you can stomach the money or if you don't need to worry about the money. Um, and especially if you search yourself and you realize that you're just not gonna network on your own. Art school sort of forces the networking or at least makes it much easier. You gotta be honest with yourself. You know? You're gonna need to network if you wanna be an artist. Or you, people are gonna have to know who you are, know what you're like, stuff like that. Um, and if you're just not the kind of person who's going to do that, like actively on your own, which let's be honest here, a lot of artists are not, you know. Um, it's good to find some way to sort of institutionalize it or to force your hand or just like make yourself accountable to getting to know people and not just being a silent recluse, you know. Which is, look, there's nothing wrong with being a silent recluse. All right, we all like it. Hold on a minute. Nick says, is this the Steven Zapata? Well, 
You know, there's, there's a lot of us out there. It'd be hard to confirm. I think at this point it would be hard to confirm. And it's like, you never know. Maybe you asked me that in the middle of a crisis of identity. It's like, how am I supposed to confirm that I'm the Stephen? You know, who is that? Is that up to me? Is that up to perception that other people have of me? You know, it's hard to, it's hard to know. Hard to know. Yeah, I guess, I guess the more I think about it, pretty gray area on that question. Pretty gray area. Hi, Stephen. Any advice for networking early in an art career? Um... I think one of the best things you can do early on is have a peer group, a small one. So find either people online or preferably people in person that you can actually know who in the same way you're doing it are on the art path, on the drawing path. So if you're going to school, it's easy to do with people in school, but if you're not going to school, then do it um, with other people who are not going to school and are trying to make their own way. But as much as you can, you want to make it so that you are on the same path. You're kind of trying to head towards the same place so you can all bounce ideas off of each other, agree on things, which is really difficult if you're not on the same path. You know, you want to agree on like, what's an authority? What isn't an authority? What's a good direction to go in? What's not a good direction to go in? What's good stuff to learn from, copy? Um, execute on, what's a good schedule, things like that. Like, make it easy for you all to agree on these things because it's, it's hard even if you have every reason to agree, it turns out. Um, I think that's one of the best things you can do early on. That will make it much easier to improve. That will keep you sane. And um, the, the thing with networking in art is that it's long game for the most part. It's about building long-term relationships with a cohort of people who at the beginning, it can feel like, what are we doing? And the thing is that in 10 years, 20 years, that's going to blossom into, oh shit, we're all doing it, you know? And, and, and if you position yourself right and you work very hard, you can kind of, well, you can find yourself in a situation where you sort of look around the art circle that you find relevant and you're like, oh shit, I know everybody. <laughs> like that can happen, you know? You can be like, oh yeah, I'm in the middle of this thing. But it's long game, you know? You don't, that doesn't come from nothing. You have to nurture that early on. But for most people, that's what real networking looks like is building up these relationships over a very long time. Uh, for very few people does networking look like sort of what a lot of people hope it is, which is like bursting into a cohort that you have nothing to do with, you know? It, it can happen, it does happen for people, but it's just like, it, it doesn't happen naturally, you know, whereas the other thing does happen naturally. Ned is spotty, gonna hop out, have a great stream. Stevie Zaps, goodbye. David Dubois, take care, man. I hope your internet gets not spotty. Nick says, ego isn't real, self doesn't exist. The supposed consciousness ascribed to the name Steven Zapata is just a piece of the great soul that had achieved samsara before birth cast it to this cruel reality. Amen, brother. <laughs> Amen to that. The selfless self, the gateless gate. Oh, I love it. I love when just one little, one little twinge, one little, one little cast in the right direction turns the whole chat into Nagarjuna emptiness deliciousness. <laughs> That's funny stuff. Colin Gallagher says, form is empty, Nibbana is samsara. Stephen is giving chat bodhicitta because he's our art bodhisattva. All right, easy now. Easy. All right. It's just all... Be here with what is, just for a moment, you know? Let's not get caught up in all of these cognitive formations, Nibbana, Bodhicitta, all of these things that the mind loves to grasp onto. Let's just... 
One line after another. One line after another. William says, okay, Stephen and everyone, I have a dilemma. A guy wants to buy my art as an NFT, but I don't know that much about it, and I'm not accepting cryptocurrency. Uh, I am a USD person. Any advice? Well, yikes. Um, I would be very cautious about connecting your art with things you don't understand. Now, once you feel confident that you understand it, I don't really think it's my place to tell you what to do, but um, there is a lot of worrying stuff about all of those things. You know, there's environmental concerns, there's concerns about what's being promised and what's actually actual with those technologies. There's concerns about, um, well, you know, I was gonna say there's concerns about speculative art assets, but I mean, not for the people who want them. You know, there's nothing wrong with speculative art assets as such, you know, fine art has always run on that. But um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that that's a very complex field and, um, or area of inquiry. And I would just be very slow to tie your art up with stuff that you don't understand because I mean, it creates conditions. You know, it creates conditions. It, um, it may always be associated with that. You don't know how it, other people will react. You've gotta be careful if you're signing contracts with any of these. All right, let me, let me cover another thing, which is middlemen. Be very cautious of middlemen in art. You don't need them. It'd be much easier for you to just do the work to understand that stuff yourself and market your stuff yourself. So um, if, I don't know if that's the situation that you're looking at, but if the person who wants to buy your art as an NFT is in effect a middleman, he's basically saying, you know, I'll show you how to do it. It's not that difficult. I'm going to buy your art as an NFT and then it'll be my NFT and then I'll sell it to the next person. And because of the smart contract, you'll get money when I resell it. Uh, yes, very nice, very nice, but still technically a middleman. And, um, Steven doesn't like middlemen. <laughs> Just don't think it's a great idea. So I wish I had more definitive answers on that, but yeah, very complex technologies. I think I would, and cultural situations, I think I would be speaking out of my ass if I pretended to have real definitive advice on those things. So I would just say, be cautious. What it's inspired you recently says Quace. Um, most of my energy lately, and by lately, I mean like the past month has been in relation to um, going into writing and writing in relation to nurturing the spirit of drawing in what may become a very tumultuous time to come. Um, and that's been the main thing that's been inspiring me. I just want to, I don't know how to describe that, what a, um, a nurturing or protective energy towards my beloved craft, something like that. Um, and those writings will manifest somehow for you all soon. I'll either turn them into videos. I've been wanting to make pre-recorded videos again, just to put out, you know, a swath of focused information. Um, or I'll release them as a, a book or something like that. So the stream came at the right time, thanks all. Our pleasure, William. Glad to see you back drawing. Thanks for fighting for us in DC. I consider it an honor, a privilege. I will do it while I can. and I will be glad to do it while I can. And while anyone is interested in having me 
uh, fight for them or advocate for them. You know, I found my experience with doing the stuff I was doing in D.C. to be very, um, while I was doing it, I found it all to be very, like, tinged with this feeling of, like, well, aren't I very lucky to be able to do this, you know? <laughs> Made me feel very fortunate. If I get to do it again, I will feel fortunate again. And if I don't get to do it again, I will always be glad to have helped when I could. Hello, Nerdy's Bird. How you doing? Do you have a newsletter, Stephen? I do not. The streams are really the main way that I disseminate news, information. I don't know. Speaking of news information, I should disseminate. For anyone who is considering getting form from imagination, uh, I will clarify my plans soon, but I am planning on offering a no feedback version of the course at a reduced price, probably starting next month. So if you are considering getting the course, um, know that I'm planning on doing that. Let that affect your purchasing decisions. And once I have codified that more, I will update again. And I do plan on having it so that you can get it with no feedback at the reduced price and then there will be a way to if you want, upgrade later to get the feedback. I'm convinced that getting too close to a political center slowly sucks the soul out of anyone. Glad to see that you retained a fragment of yours after your trip, Stephen. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I was doing it for something I really believe in, right? So um, it, I think if things get very political in sort of a cynical way, which I think a lot of political stuff does, or using politics or using your government can get very cynical, um, then yeah, it's going to sap your soul. But yeah, my experience was I was there advocating for something that I r really strongly believed in. I mean, you guys all know that. And um, it was just, it would, it would sort of be, you know, not, not that I wasn't stressed by it at times, worried about it at times, but in my best mood, right, which, you know, a lot of your evaluations as a person, I think, are best made in like when you're at your most focused, most centered, you've taken a second to realign yourself. Um, in that most focused place, it was always clear to me, like it would be silly to let that dominate the experience. It's like very lucky to be able to do anything instead of sort of sitting on your hands and feeling completely like you can't contribute, you can't help, you can't protect the thing that you love. So I was, um, you know, actively focused on making sure that I went through the experience while foregrounding that and just feeling, you know, a lot of gratitude, a lot of good fortune, a lot of luck, no matter what happened, no matter what the outcome was. Steven, so you haven't started your imperial conquest yet? Is 
something something from the suttas about how the Buddha said that uh, a moment of the mind taking Nibbana as its object is better than a lifetime as an imperial lord even in the heaven realms. Stephen, how's it going? I'm good, Jim Wool. I am truly good. Sansia says, I felt such a warm sense of joy and pride when I saw you and Carla sitting together at the DC event. Such important work. I hope so. Is this from a reference, says Nerdy's Bird? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, Carla's the best. Felt, uh, <laughs> you feel like you're in good hands when you're doing stuff like this with her. <laughs> She makes it easy, you know. She's also a good ward against doubt, man. I mean, if you're the kind of person who, and I definitely am, you know, I, I, I mean, the reason that I talk about the kinds of stuff that I talk about on this channel all the time is because I'm very familiar with sort of having the kind of creative mind that is constantly applying itself to maladaptive things where it's like, oh, well, this is going well for me. Let me find some reason why it shouldn't be going well for me to guilt myself out of this and just make this a miserable experience. Instead, it's like, you know, it, it takes a lot to deprogram that, but there's certain people you can be around who are just like, they'll make sure that doesn't happen to you. You know, Carla's a great ward against any doubt, you know? Some people have that power. I see... Anna Rude saying something to Cassie. What did Japan do? Let me see. Aside from you being there, I was also comforted by Hank Johnson. Def definitely acknowledged our fears and most of the representatives felt Japan's approach was too much. Yeah, I think... I, I would like to think that most sensible people would think Japan's recent stance, which... I'm not convinced is a permanent thing. Um, I need to do more research and all that, but um, I think most sensible people would think that's a bit much. You're just not gonna protect anyone? You're not gonna protect any copyright on AI grounds? Just don't see that going much of anywhere. Uh, I forgot if I answered Nerdy Bird when they said, is this from a reference? Yes, this is. I'm currently drawing from reference. I haven't drawn for a bit. I haven't drawn for a bit. Always use, always nice to use a reference to, um, well, I don't generally think of it as like warming up. What I more think of it as, um, how to put this, uh, inclining the mind towards the niceties and subtleties of what the world actually looks like. That, that's more <laughs> how I think about it. It's less about warming up some mechanical function. Maybe it does that a bit, but I mean, that's just not super important at a certain point, you know? Um, but sort of mindfully reminding yourself of how complex and nuanced and beautiful and subtle real forms actually are. I think that has a, um, a very strong conditioning effect and is good to spend time with that, whether you apply it or not. And um, if that is a sense of warming up, then it's probably the more useful sense of warming up, I think. Boba Fett. Wow, it's the Boba Fett. Like the... Boba Fett, like the Mandalorian bounty hunter, is in this chat. Wow. Pretty messed up, right? But that's the kind of action we get around here. It's pretty serious. Real, real folks showing up. Boba Fett says, sorry if I'm repeating. Have you ever worked in the game industry? Got any tips for someone who wants to get in that realm as an artist? I have worked in the game industry. Um, tips. Mm, different tips would be appropriate for different kinds of people and people at different stages. If you're at the point where you have been doing this for a while, you know, you're an intermediate or advanced artist and the um, wanting to get in that you want to do includes that you already have a portfolio, you already have works to show, you're not a beginner who is trying to manifest their portfolio at the beginning. 
um, I would advise uh, going through your work, updating it, rearranging it, making it new work, and that and rearranging it such that it is focused for a particular company. Um, it is easiest to get a job if it is laughably clear, annoyingly clear, boringly clear to the art directors at the company that you do exactly the kind of work that they need at the time. If that sounds a little slippery, if that sounds like how can you know, that's because yes, it is slippery. And yes, how exactly can you know what they need at that time? Uh, a good bit of luck is needed for sure. You need a good bit of luck. Um, if you have connections, as we said, networking is important. Um, connections are good. Don't, <laughs> don't ask people to break NDAs, but if people can wink and nod at you about what kind of work they need right now, video game companies aren't always making the same goddamn thing they just made. Video game companies are often making new things that are different from the thing that they just made behind closed doors in secret, but that is still the kind of work that they need, even though you couldn't, in good faith and good conscience and good reason, within reasonable bounds, know what it is. So maybe sneaky, sneaky, maybe make friends, maybe ask questions. That's what you gotta do. You gotta do stuff like that. Um, try to make the work that they need at the time, make it as direct and clear as possible and put it in front of the people who make the decisions. You can also just get totally dumb luck. That's also possible. When, when, I, worked in, when I worked in video games, uh, I, didn't, I didn't have a connection or like background info or anything like that. I, I, I did get a, um, you know, just my portfolio was the right thing at the right time with no targeting from me, you know? I did apply for the job, but um, I didn't like make new work or anything like that. I don't think. It was a while ago, a little hard to remember. Maybe I made one piece that I thought might be relevant, but I don't know if that was the one that got me hired. I don't think so. Doe says, hi, folks. Hi, Steven. Long time no see. Yeah, been doing some stuff. Good to see you, Doe. Moon Bear Bacon says, Stephen, would you be up for speaking more about it with political streamer Destiny? He reacted to your video and would probably value your nuanced input and it would be a good platform for your message. Um, someone did mention that to me a while ago, a long time ago. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd be fine to discuss it, but um, I, I don't know what kind of connection that person had with Destiny, but nothing came of it. I don't know. I don't know if I don't follow Destiny, so I don't know if he's still on AI, on AI, you know, as a topic or anything like that. But um, generally, I 
don't mind talking with people about it. Muhammad says, hey, Stephen, a question regarding art school grading. Should I focus on it and always keep it in mind or just let it, let it, or just let it as it be? So like leave it as it be because often I do better work than my peers but get a lesser grade. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's skillful to let it slip completely just because like why are you at the school if you're not going to get like, there's a certain amount where it's like if you're at the school, you're at the school and you want to get the degree, right? Um, and you don't want to, hopefully you are also getting good knowledge from your teachers. So there's a good reason to do what they say so that you can learn more stuff. But yeah, I, I often tell people just like grading at art schools is sort of like a, a weird conceit, like, a like they have to do it just because that's the world and that's what they got to do. And, um, I wouldn't worry about it too much. You know, I mean... As someone who has had to give grades for art uh, at a college, uh, even me doing it, it's just like, this is the game we're playing right now, and it is kind of silly at its core. You know, it's, it's art, you know? At a school, you have to objectify it because, God, well, because makes it sound too ultimate. It was just like uh, accreditation boards, you want to, you know, manifest this reality where this degree is real you know it means something and it's just like that comes with cultural conditioning you know and but is it a big deal in some ultimate sense yeah no i, I don't think so not really and i've had head-on collisions with that i've had students who were the worst students in my class um who were getting the lowest grades who were not doing the work who were just you know having just like what aren't what you would want in a class setting at final they just pull it all off you know it's like you never know people are capable of incredible things you don't need to put people in boxes and you shouldn't put yourself in a box either Hi, JB. Happy to be back. Anna Roots says, Stephen, every time you do the pencil sharpening, I feel like an old favorite song is about to play because that's the sound the song starts with. That's funny. Hopefully, that, hopefully that's a nice, warm feeling that doesn't, um, doesn't leave you trapped in anticipation over and over. All right, let's go to another ref. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing a bunch of reactions to the question about speaking to destiny. Um, yeah, looks like a lot of drama, 
Um, I'm not a big drama person, so I don't know. Not going to worry about it. Not going to think about it. Um, it's, un it's unlikely that it would happen anyway. <laughs> I just tell. Most things do not. Most things that are speculated on, most things that might occur, tend not to occur. So... Muhammad says, I personally don't care about it, but it's bothering me because the professor that always grades me low advised me to stop working in my style, which is body horror, but praised a female peer for doing it. Yeah, I mean, you don't need to say much to convince me that there's bad art teachers out there who um, are not being uh, as thoughtful as they could be about the things they say to students. I, um, you know, it puts me in a, a bad position to sort of be a bad influence, you know, to tell people to sort of disregard teachers and things like that. It's like, that's not a fun spot for me to be in, right? Not the coolest thing. <laughs> um, but it's just in art, and again, we, there's got to be disclaimers and quantifiers for like if you're trying to hit a specific goal and you feel super sure about that and this person is perhaps, and I would have the bar super high for this, but someone who you trust to get you to that goal. Again, I think the bar for that should be crazy high. It should be almost impossible to be that person in someone's life, basically. There's got to be room for that, for just like, if, if it's the, the good golden version of that, there's got to be room to just sort of like, yeah, give yourself up to their opinion and things like that. But I would say 90, 95% of cases are not that. 95% of cases are cases where I would say it is perfectly reasonable to not give a shit what somebody thinks about your art. If that puts me in a rough position when it comes to like, you know, advising people who are in school and, and um, you know, they're supposed to be listening to their teachers and stuff like that, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's just like I've met too many people who bad art teachers have just let stuff flow. We all let stuff just flow out of our mouth, right? Things just come up. But you've got to be willing upon inspection and upon pushback to remember like, right, that was just flowing out of my mouth. That's not some ultimate thing. You know, these things just come up and, you know, I'm not vetting everything that I'm saying perfectly. And you've got to be willing to admit that you're probably saying thoughtless things, things that can hurt people, that can be interpreted as cruel. You know, you've got to be, we all do it, man. So, when a student pushes back, you've got to be willing to, I think, to step back to the ultimate level and be like, you're right, dog. I mean, it, it's, it's, your style is, 
the work that you want to do is first and foremost. You know, and we may be playing this different game. There might be something nuanced going on here, but first and foremost, it's your work. It's your art. Um, and if the other person is not willing to meet you on that level, not willing to respect that, I just don't see very many good reasons to get hung up on what they think or say. I just don't. It's, it's hard to imagine what would be a great reason if it's hurting you, distracting you, making you make less art, making you more annoyed with your art. That's the path to cynicism in art making, which is an easy, easy path. And so many people wind up there. Steven, what should you do when you get burnt out? Take a break. Just take a break. I don't think there's anything wrong with taking breaks. And take one, take a long one. Take whatever time you need. Like find out why you're burnt out. What were you, just table it for a bit and just look at what assumptions was I putting on myself without scrutiny that led to me being burnt out by the thing I love most or one of the things I love most. There's always a problem. There's always something that can get tuned there. Because if things are running just right, it's just not, not much to burn you out in drawing, you know? Joe says, Stephen, do you have the exact curves and shapes of those core shadows clearly in your mind or are you deciding them while you draw? While I draw, I, I rarely, uh, I'm usually reacting to stuff on the page. I can imagine things very clearly in my mind, but I don't do that while I draw, not consciously. I just react. Um, I'm agnostic as to the overlap there. Like, I, I don't know if this will make sense to you guys, but it's, it's possible that I can react well because if I close my eyes and imagine, I can imagine things very clearly. Does that make sense? It's like whatever part of me has these feelings about how stuff should look is probably the same part that's reacting on the page and the same part that's imagining something clearly when I close my eyes. So there may be a significant amount of overlap there, but I am not tracing an image in my head or a line or a shape ever, basically. And people always debate me on this, but I'm not sure anybody actually does. I think you can, somebody probably does, but I think most people don't. Even if they think they do, I don't think, I think, you know, you can convince yourself a lot of stuff is happening <laughs> in your internality. And I just don't, it doesn't add up for me. I don't, I don't know what tracing an image in your head would mean, like mechanically, functionally. I just don't get that. I don't see how that could happen. Pushback helps people grow though. Yeah, pushback does help people grow, but like me, when I'm, training people, I'm always willing to be very precise about the game I'm playing. I'm always willing to be totally honest about like, this is a teacher's gambit. Um, I am purposefully trying to motivate you. I am pur purposefully trying to summon determination in you. Um, I am regressing to the ultimate level now. So, you know, things are very structuralist here and we're going to talk about spirit and subjectivity and things like this. Um, I am operating purposefully within a narrow focus that sort of makes me a bullheaded, ignorant moose that is just focused on getting you such and such job or such and such portfolio. Um, I personally am always willing to just put my cards on the table and that runs the spectrum. You know, I can, I can just, it's all there. You know, I'm, I'm not... <laughs> highly flexible about how all of this is structural systems that we're working within. And that within that view, there's simply no reason to hurt someone or hurt their art. And anyone who doesn't think it's possible to hurt someone or hurt their art in the teacher-student relationship is a teacher who has been living with fucking blinders on. 
and hasn't been having enough real conversations with people who are really trying to connect with art and get good at art. Because if you're actually doing that for a day, you find out that most artists out there have some period either in the past or that they're living through now where careless words from some teacher that they refuse to quantify with their subjectivity have been fucking them up for years, have been running, living rent-free in the student's head for years, decades or more. And when that's finally deprogrammed, they feel intense freedom. And they're like, oh, I was wasting my time with that crap. It's like, that was all unnecessary. Just because someone refuses to just be honest about the fact that they're not the objective authority on what's good art. Any sensible goddamn human being, art teacher or not, should be willing to constantly remind students that they are not the objective authority on what is good art. Anka says, how can I achieve a realistic texture effect in software such as Clip Studio Paint? Do you have any advice that I should pay attention to in this regard? Um, I don't think I'm a good person to ask for that. Um, I'm, I've used Clip Studio quite a bit, but not really for texture. I just draw in it uh, pretty linearly. That's the stuff that I find Clip very useful for. Um, in general, Textures should be considered as very small forms and their relationship to the primary and secondary forms should be well understood. Um, generally, in the most general sense, it's like that's the most important thing about textures. You've got to make them respect the light effect and react as very tiny forms, which is, you know, quite a subtle thing actually. But um, yeah, as to how to do that specifically in Clip or what are good tools for that in Clip, I don't think I'm the right person to ask for that. Sorry. Miji says, hello, Stephen. As someone who sculpts lines as I draw, erasing it to give weight or make it thinner, so many times I've heard that my lines are not confident enough. What does that really mean? I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, if you like the results that you're getting, don't worry about it. You can work however you want. Every, every method is valid if you like your results. It's like a throwing your lines in one go like this is a way to lines that look confident, but if you can sculpt that, which is totally possible, it's just dots on a page, right? If you can sculpt that effect, it may take longer, but if that's how you like to work, what's the problem? I mean, most of art is making it look easier than it actually was. So if you wanna do that with your lines, totally possible. Most of art is based in the act of artificing ease and virtuosity, so. No big deal. And don't don't worry too much about what other people tell you. <laughs> Yo, 
Is there any technique that we can use or that you use to transfer the composition that we visualize in our minds in traditional drawing to paper? Yeah, again, kind of like I said earlier, like I don't, I tend not to visualize, like I will, if I'm driving, I'll have an idea for a drawing that is a visual in my mind. But even if an idea occurred to me like that, even if the visual was really strong while I was in the car or wherever, or out on a walk, um, when I then take that idea to work on it at the drawing board, I'm not transferring it to the paper. I'm, okay, so to understand my position here, I unfortunately have to make statements that um, again, people will disagree with me on, but I find this to be true for me personally. You only think it's clear. We're already in weird territory, but I saw it in my head. It's clear. I don't believe you. I think that like in a dream, it comes with the emotional valence of clarity. And so you experience it like clarity, but like in a dream, uh, if you're a, uh, we're in weird territory, if you're a lucid dreamer, right, then you know that if you could mindfully investigate the nature of the dream from within the dream, you would see that everything that you thought was so clear is actually very odd. Your hands are all fucked up, writing's all wrong, but in the dream, you look at your hands, you read things, you don't need it all to hold together. Your brain just says, this is clear, this all makes sense. It just floods you with the emotional valence that makes you just not scrutinize those things. Um, I know we're in weird territory and you're all like, but I see it in my head. Don't believe me, that's fine. This is just how it's been for me because again, like I said, I see things extremely clearly in my head. If, if you try to transfer that exactly, it's impossible, it doesn't happen. And then even, even if you think you did, nine times out of 10, you'll find it's unsatisfactory. Well, why is it unsatisfactory if I transferred it so perfectly? It's like, you're not really dealing with the real thing, you know? You're not dealing with the real thing. So I think that those are the images, the flashes that come. There is information there, the nature of that information I can't pretend to be privy to, but mostly it's like an emotional charge, like a dream that can convey deep symbolic meaning, right? Even though our dreams are nonsensical and things like that, they do come with, they're pregnant with meaning and that meaning can be unraveled if you're so inclined. Um, but, um, and I'm not talking about some ultimate meaning that everybody can agree on. I mean, like subjective meaning. Um, the same thing is happening with those flashes, that stuff that you have in your head. So you, so if you accept that, if you feel like that's right, if you agree with me, everybody who disagrees with me, totally fine. Um, you don't bring it, you don't bring the composition to the page and then try to trace it onto the paper. You bring the emotionality that came with the flash of inspiration to the page, and then you work on it. That'll save you a lot of suffering because you won't be confused as to, you'll be misattributing things. You'll be like, well, I see it so clearly in my head, but it doesn't come down right. The composition is all off. And then you're like, ah, oh, it's because I'm bad at drawing. And then you'll ask me questions like, what is the technique to trace the image from my mind? And it's like, you could skip all of that if you just realize that you just need to work on it and there's nothing to trace. You just need to then begin the process of codifying the emotionality that you felt into a concrete form that appropriately communicates that emotionality. And that requires trial and effort, moving lines left, moving lines right, moving masses up, moving masses down, redoing the whole composition, different viewpoints, putting in different pieces of content, taking pieces of content out. The work that we all know is necessary in art and the work is asked for and makes sense if you view ideas like that and the work is not asked for and makes no fucking sense if you pretend that you can trace images from your mind. We good here? All
does it become a matter of just doing it enough to figure it out or is it that mix of knowledge studies and doing it's a mix for most everybody i think when you, when you go on the when you're going for the higher levels um i think for everybody it's a mix of it is a mix of knowledge and insights um sometimes i think insights is a better word cuz at a certain point i'd say when you cross into being more advanced it's less about knowledge has this sort of implication that it's all stuff you could write down whereas insights sometimes i feel is like more indicative of what's really happening which is that like you know how to hold your mind while you work and you have like these these mental states that you're comfortable inhabiting you know whether you're being very relaxed or you're being more design minded you're being very intentional you're being very open you know um you can sort of naturally move between those mind states by just inclining the mind in such and such direction um and it i think that that kind of encompasses both you know it's like that that handles both the stuff you know and it handles the more tranquil side of things the just doing it side of things it's like just relying on the insights that you've accrued from years and years of practice and building momentum and concentration and inhabiting tranquility for longer and longer periods red diamond man red diamond man i just want to make cool pictures says nick don't we all why did how did it all get so complicated how did it all get so complicated not the red diamond man. Oh, easy. No, 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 no. He's not coming out. Don't worry. He's fine. We got him tucked away. He's in his little red diamond man box. Free in his little diamond box contained and yet also free. I don't know what. Um, the red diamond was the hand of the goblin that was riding the dragon too. I'll cry now. What is happening in chat? Is there a way to remain honest and critical of our art without it tipping over into unnecessary harshness? For sure. For sure. There's just, you know, it's not that complicated i don't think i think you're free to talk to yourself in as harsh a way as you would like but as long as you're you recognize that all you're doing is talking to yourself it doesn't like you can you can carry it lightly right be cruel to yourself be vicious swear at yourself if you carry that lightly if you know it's just that that up that up that up it's just chatter it's like all right like whatever you know <laughs> if it helps you get into the mood and it helps you uh diagnose the work um it's not a big deal oh shit give me one second guys i got to put something out to defrost i'll be right back life you know you got to feed your wife i mean you got to feed them wives need food <clears throat> what was i talking about i completely forgot what i was talking about hey steven have you been banned from tiktok i don't think so but i haven't looked at my tiktok in months months and months If I mean if they ban me whatever I don't care. <laughs> I just stopped using it. I'm too I'm too old now, man. I'm just like 
you know, it's not age. It's just like my life has changed. My incentives have changed. And it's just like I made like 30,000 followers on TikTok in like two or three weeks. And it's just like, you know, when you've done multiple social medias, you know, you did Instagram, you did YouTube, you've done the art ones, you know, like ArtStation and CG Hub. It's like, it just gets, you know, who cares about the stupid numbers? It's like, you'll just have to do it again for the next one. It's like, it's all a rat race. It's so stupid. <laughs> it's not so e it was just really easy for me to be like, you know what, I don't care. <laughs> just dump it. It doesn't matter. A lot of Red Diamond Man right now. A lot of Red Diamond Man right now. I do not remember what I was talking about. Good night, Chris Traps. Chris Taps. Hi, Dino Blaster. Dino Blaster. Dino Blaster. You better watch out if you're a dino, cause here comes Dino Blaster. Death to dinosaurs. He's a hero in his town, a hero in his village, cause he's a dino blaster. But to dinos, he is a genocidal maniac. He murders civilizations and species, and that's what we like. Go get him, go get him, go get him, dino blaster. Go get him, dino blaster. Dinosaurs may bring joy to children, but... In the lane of his ire, they must be destroyed. All right, let's just draw some whatever stuff now. I'm done drawing from reference. I'm done. I'm done. Steven desperately trying to drown Red Diamond Man with Dino Blaster. Look, Red, Red Diamond Man can never die. He can simply never die. Like Lolly, it says, no, please stay exclusive to YouTube. YouTube is definitely mine thing. You know, I'm, I'm simply too long-winded and Baroque to work on all of these other platforms. Well, I can make it work, but it's just like, I just, I don't, I don't like putting myself in these itty bitty, you know, a tiny little, my very detailed drawing that I spent a uh, hundred hours on. I just show it an inch and a half wide on a, on a cell phone. It's like, I can't, I'll try to, yeah, I can, kind of game the system on the on the ratio so that it's like maybe three inches tall. It's like, no, 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 very specific ratios. Very small, very tiny. We like it tiny. All the details, all the way tiny. Oh, you could do a carousel. They could see the details completely out of context and not aligning with the scale hierarchy the way that you intended it to. Like, oh, kind of art, super complicated thing, really nuanced. You know, have, you, you need to be able to diagnose it but while getting information from the student, you know, to find out where they're at in life. And they're, let, let's do it in a one-minute clip. That's totally asynchronous. Yes, that's, that's good, right? That makes sense. Yeah, one, one minute to talk about art. Yes. No, that stuff makes sense to me. Done with it. Don't like that. You know, for certain things, for certain lanes, for specific things you're trying to get out there useful but for the real deal come on come on nonsense I'm hearing a bit of Daffy Duck. I feel a bit like Daffy Duck. I feel like Daffy Duck in that famous episode where he's like, Bugs is redrawing him as all of these creatures and transmogrifying him and stuff like that. That's definitely how I feel.
Hey, Steven, did you work on the Now in the Theater's Barbie? <laughs> no. No. You sound like the main villain from Dino Blaster. It's very funny. It's very funny, Mr. Spark. It's very funny. You don't need to do that. You need to keep making those brag videos that get people riled up bad in the comments. Yeah, well, you know. My, I was making those before AI showed up, so. Some, something slightly more useful <laughs> rose up to demand my attention and my time. Once I, uh, once I fix AI, I'll, um, I'll go back to making the, the brag videos. Anyone know about Next Discount on Get the Course? Thank you for asking because I have been announcing occasionally on this stream um, that I am planning on putting out a no feedback version of the course that will be at a reduced price. Uh, next month is my plan right now. So for everyone who is considering you get the course, factor that into your calculations. And there should be a way to get it without feedback. Get the content, and then you can upgrade to feedback later if you would like. I will figure that out this month. Just got to figure out how to structure the separate versions, make them accessible, and how to do the... Um, feedback tickets. Shouldn't be too complicated. I don't think it's complicated. I just need to investigate and make sure that it's not going to produce any unintended problems. Always got to draw Cthulhu early on in any visit to Imagination Town. Cthulhu. Hello, Mama Nova. Yo, is Ahmed okay? He has been, he was a bit weird on Instagram lately. Um, I have not been on Instagram, so I don't know what you're talking about, but uh, in general, don't you worry about Med. He's all right. Do you think drawing on paper and drawing digitally wires your brain differently? Um, yeah, but m probably not in like some weird ultimate sense that you may be thinking. I think it's just like, I think it's undeniable that if you draw traditional, you are kind of forced to always think within the bounds of the limits of your medium. Like if you do pencil art, that point is tiny. So you tend to not have ideas that are really dependent on like, all right, I've got to fit 
I've got to fill a shape this big completely flat because it's very difficult to do. So you can still have that idea if you're conscious of it and you can go for it if you plan for it. But to me, it's just undeniable that you, you, you won't focus on stuff like that just because there's tons of friction to achieving that. Whereas if you work digital, this isn't a problem. You just lasso it and fill it in perfect flat tone, whatever color or gray that you want. So just like you're more inclined to then allow moments like that into your ideas. Um, if that sounds like I'm privileging digital more than traditional, uh, that's not the case. I mean, they both have their huge benefits and their drawbacks. Um, digital certainly wins for flexibility by my accounts, but uh, I don't do everything digital because even though it's very flexible, uh, it doesn't, it's for me, this doesn't need to be the case for you, but um, I find one of its drawbacks to be that it's slippery enough that it makes it difficult for me to finish stuff. You know, it's just, there's no natural agreement between the medium and you about when a picture is finished. Whereas traditional does provide that. The friction is useful. The scale is set. You know, you can't zoom in forever. And eventually the paper lets you know, you can't go any further than this. Like it, I'm full of graphite, no more, you know, make your choices, you know, it's time to, it's time to ship it. Um, and I find that very useful and just the ability to sink into it and to feel the scritchy scratchies make me more inclined to spend a hundred hours on something and to actually finish it than the somewhat painful experience of staring at a light bulb for a hundred hours and having all these distractions popping up and, um, you know, just having the, you know, zooming in and out and just like, all right, well, any arbitrary part of the picture can be as detailed as you want. It's just like all very, makes it hard, makes it hard to focus. For me, for me. Whoops, tore the page. Whatever. Charlie says, Stephen, I feel like I'm overwhelmed when I'm mapping my shadows, graphite, ink. I get lost when they are different local values and textures, animal fur especially. Over, when I'm, I'm overwhelmed when I'm mapping my shadows. In graphite, ink. I get lost when they are different local values and textures. Any tips? I mean, not a lot of tips that make it that much easier. I mean, if you're doing a, me a medium like ink or graphite, like the beauty and care of the shadows is kind of what your picture is made of, you know? So yeah, I don't have many tips to make it easier or like a quick fix. Um, it's just like, that's what you got. You know, you're putting black down on the page. Like you're adding shadows. That's basically all you're ever doing, especially if you're doing ink. So it's like, should be complicated, should be hard. It's like that, that is indicative of the depth of what is possible, even with a simple, simple medium like ink. Um, so you just got to make your peace with that at a certain point, I think. It's okay for it to be difficult. It's okay for it to be complicated. It's okay for it to be confusing. Um, and it's okay to be overwhelmed. It can be overwhelming stuff. I don't know what kind of pictures you do, but stuff is complicated. So yeah, sometimes you just need to make your peace with it being overwhelming and something that you're gonna need to sort of balance out and piece together over the course of years, you know? It's gonna be all right. Just keep working on it. Yeah, for, for local value problems, uh, this is a very kind of banal answer that could really be applied to pretty much everything, but it's true. It's like, understand light. Un understand the nature of light and how it produces the modeling factors on form. If you understand that well, local values will kind of handle themselves and you'll know how to make them respect each other in a, a picture that has any kind of particular light 
situation. No quick answer for that. I mean, my explanation of that in my drawing course form from imagination is like hours long. <laughs> it's like, there's no quick answer for that. It takes me even, even edited down on script, just saying exactly what I mean, takes hours <laughs> to explain it. It's a lot. Um, so it's, it's not an easy thing, but you know, you only need to learn it once too. You know, once you get it, you just get it. Um, and for things like fur, like particular materials and things like that, um, you know, materials have very different natures and, um, for things like fur, it's like, Fur is a very specific material that when we're talking shadow shapes and things like that, fur tends to feel light. You know, most fur is translucent, so it transmits light a lot. And in a situation where there are materials there that are um, transmitting light, that means that light goes inside, bounces around uh, randomly on the inside of the material, and then departs the material from usually all, all parts of it in a diffuse way. All of that to say the sum effect of that is that it lightens the shadows and it makes it very difficult for shadows to get as dark on that material as it would on that same form made out of a non-transmissive material because everything that is in the shadow is still sort of having, is having light suffused through from the light side and it's all bouncing all around and it just raises the, the average value of the shadow areas. Uh, and that goes for the Oh God, it goes for the primary form that the fur is on and it goes for the individual strands of fur and tufts of fur. Um, it's complicated stuff. Um, but again, you know, just for my explanation there, the rules of light, the laws of light are important. They will sort of tell you, give you ideas for how to handle this stuff. Um, and then you find ingenious ways to apply it. You know, based on what I just said, you might conclude, all right, fur might look a little bit more natural if I water the ink down so that it's not pure black, but it's more of a gray. And uh, yeah, I'd bet money that fur will look more natural if it's more of a gray rather than pure black, because it's just very hard value to actually produce on fur. Um, but you gotta balance that against, you know, are, are you, are you using ink in such a way that you do water it down? Maybe you don't want to do that. You know, maybe you do want it just stark, pure black and white. It's complicated. Dino Blaster says, graphite gave me miner's lung. Now I'm forced to only draw with oils. God, I hope that's not true. Oh, my poor dog. I didn't feed my dog either. Damn it. I'm going to feed her real quick. I'm sorry I'm leaving again. See, that wasn't so bad, right? I was barely gone. Fast, fast, fast. Stephen exposing himself as a poor provider. That's right. What do you get the most satisfaction to draw? Personally, to draw fur or steam is really pleasant. That's good. Uh, monsters, usually. Monsters or human anatomy is usually my favorite thing to draw. Just anything that I can sort of really freely bend around and transform and stuff like that.
you know, things that kind of just let me play with design and go wild and have a really open space where it's like there's no wrong answer, you know? Those are just very conducive to relaxation and to sort of being in like a anything goes kind of a state. And uh, that brings me the most joy. I do enjoy very much doing the other kind of thing where there are very tight structures and you're really just trying to nail something specific, but it's just like one, ju one does tend to lend itself more to that state, to finding it easeful. Does the paper you use matter? I think it does. I mean, I think paper matters more than pencils. It doesn't matter in some ultimate sense. And the paper that's good for one person um, may be bad for another based on what they want to do, what feels comfortable for them. Like, I don't like grainy paper, but lots of people are the exact opposite of me. They can't stand smooth paper and they need grainy paper. So it's not like an ultimate answer. It's not like there's objective, like this material is better than the other, but I do think paper matters. Um, I do generally say like, I think it's always a good idea to work on great paper. You know, I don't like working on crappy stuff, even though this is cheap, you know, it's very rare that I work on something like this. It's good if you know you're not doing anything serious, but generally I advise people like work on the good stuff, you know, and get used to working on the good stuff so that you can rehearse the whole range of your ability, including the very top level of your ability. Goodbye, Charlie. Enjoy your time at the paper. Hey, Mel, how you doing, buddy? Curse Stitch. Yeah, it does look like Stitch, right? That's funny. I like thicker paper. Yeah, I generally work on all the time, just on good, thick, premium stock. You know, moleskin sketchbooks are expensive, nice paper, thick, stands up to abuse. Or um, if I'm not drawing in a sketchbook, then I'm usually drawing on Strathmore 400 series bristle paper smooth, which is primo paper. Just like I'll just endeavor to not care if I'm wasting it. I'll just do sketches on it, doodles on it, who cares, and then do finished drawings on it. But just, I think people spend too much time in general on cheap sketch paper. It's like, if you're trying to move up in your abilities, that really does limit you just because there's only so much correction and refining that paper will allow. So it's not gonna let you rehearse the top level of your ability. It's always gonna keep you stuck in the middle area or at the beginning. I just don't think that's a good idea. I like the chunkier style you're using today. Sometimes you gotta go chunky. What's the time there? It is currently 6.08 p.m. Soon, soon it will be time to cook, Jesse.
Goblin Gang versus the Red Diamonds. <sighs> Be a rough fight. Be a rough encounter. William likes bristle but uses the Canson Mixed Media. Yeah, the Canson Mixed Media is good paper. Good stuff. I'd love to see you do some rendering in Procreate. I could probably learn a thing or seven. Um, I do it basically the same as I do in Photoshop, you know, really big, really big moves first. Um, in Photoshop, I tend to do that with the airbrush, but in Procreate, I find the airbrush annoying. So usually I put it down with a harder brush, even sometimes a really just solid, hard round. Um, and then I use the smudge tool in Procreate to blow that out and just warp values around because the smudge tools tend to be nicer in Procreate than um, Photoshop, but just big moves first, just the primary forms. Just if this is a vaguely cylindrical, if this is a vaguely spherical form, render it as a sphere first. And then because it's, you know, that's not necessarily the right move with traditional, but in digital you have infinite flexibility. So kind of give it quick spherical modeling factors and then beat it up, wiggle things around, break up the terminator, break up the half tones. Do the same with everything. This is a vaguely cylindrical form, render it like a cylinder real quick, beat it up. Render it like a cube real quick, beat it up. And then you're constantly sort of, you know, you got tunnel vision on it, you made it too much like a sphere on its own. Uh, it stands out too much. It doesn't respect the light effect of all of the other forms. It grabs too much attention. So you remove contrast and modeling factors, flatten it out a bit so that it lets other things sing and things like that, compositional stuff. Oh, my camera's really dark. You watch anything cool recently? Uh, cool. Uh, just a bunch of shows wrapped up. Um, Succession and Barry both ended. I liked both of their endings. Mm. Mm, 
what have I seen lately? I rewatched some old movies, movies I've already seen. I watched, over the past week or so, I watched Top Gun again with a bunch of people, the first one. Watched uh, Independence Day again with a bunch of people who hadn't seen it. Um, watched that new Netflix movie. Oh, I already forgot. It's about the down on her luck mother. Has Mark Maron in it. I thought it was all right. Um, just been very busy lately. I haven't been watching much. I watched Artifice Girl, pretty unique. I'll have to check that out. Is it a movie or a TV show? Have you seen the new Spider-Man? No. Mechanical pencils, yay or nay? Yay, for sure. One of my favorites. I did the... Um, a lot of the demos for my rendering course, like I think the first, most of them, I did them all with uh, just the 0.5 mechanical HB pencil, just to make the point that um, you could do all those things without the widest variety of pencils or anything fancy. Just focusing on form point to point. I love mechanical pencils. Is that a dog squeaking? It might have been. I don't know, I was just focused on drawing. Might have been the neighbor's dog. Got a few dogs around here. I only ever see you use mechanical and colored pencils. Yeah, they're definitely my favorite. I do use the, um, like these, the Faber Castells. Not this one. I just grabbed this one at random, but I usually use the, uh, these are the Faber-Castell matte graphites. I do use the 14B of this line a lot. I like that pencil. It's just, if you're gonna go that dark, like for a background or something like that, it's useful to have one that reduces the glare. Anything will do though. But yeah, usually it's just the mechanical black colored pencils like this one. Steven, are you an ultimate skeptic? Do you think humans can access any type of genuine truth, capital truth? I mean, yeah, I mean, if you're talking about like, I'm not too familiar with the terms that you're using, 
But like, yeah, I think I'm pretty hard, pretty hard skeptical. Um, not in like a negative way. I don't think I think that word has a kind of a nihilistic connotation, but I don't feel that way in my life. You know, I have deep meaning in my life, a lot of joy. Um, but yeah, um, genuine truth. Yeah, it'd be hard to say. I mean, if you don't mean human truth there, which I think there's a better case that you could access some human truth. I just, yeah, I don't see how a person could access truth, at least as we know people. I mean, it would have to be an experience of truth and an experience will always be mitigated by human physiology. So I, I think odds are low that ultimate truth would align with that. You know, I, I can't even find, like, if I look at my neighbor's tree in the backyard, I know tree, you know, even if I break things down, you know, with what I know about science and vision and drawing and art, like, I can know the tree in a sort of phenomenological way as a series of uh, light shapes and shadow shapes and color shapes, like break it down just to what I'm viewing, but that's just how the human eye views it. And I'm, I'm not saying trees know themselves, but just as a way to handle the jargon, like there's no way the tree knows itself the way I know it. It's got to be something completely different. So, yeah. I don't think so. And then again, kind of like I said earlier about art, it's like, would you want to have an answer about ultimate truth? <laughs> like, wouldn't that be kind of boring? Like, isn't it funny that like for as much as we might want that, it's like if you could just answer it, if you could just answer existence, wouldn't that take some of the juice out of it? <laughs> And it's like, whatever, if there is truth, whatever the truth is, it's like, you're it, baby. <laughs> it's like, just, it's not not happening in you just because you don't understand it, right? So even if you can't access it, even if a human mind cannot grasp ultimate truth, if there is an ultimate truth, it must still be functioning underneath, you know? It's still you, you know? Some people seem to conflate skeptic with cynic. Yeah, and it's understandable, you know, because a lot, I mean, it's not like that's for no reason. I mean, it do, they do arise hand in hand in a lot of situations, but yeah, it's definitely not, um, it shouldn't be conflated because there's definitely ways to, yeah, just have them not arise as a pair. One cannot attain form from imagination without first prostrating to the infinite power of the sun. It says Dino Blaster. Wow, very solar, very primal, very Dino Blaster. I love it. May all of your heliotropism treat you well. May it guide you to the sun's good graces. Epify Dude says, what if experience itself is the substance of reality, not whether or not it correlates 
to an outside reality. What if experience itself is the substance of reality, not whether or not it correlates to an outside reality, but what would the substance of consciousness be made of if not existence itself? Yeah, again, I mean like, we're unfortunately trapped by very sloppy words, right? Like no one, no one in this chat would probably be able to agree on what you mean by existence there. Probably no one could agree on what you mean by consciousness there, or we'd have to go through a pretty severe process of defining terms. But um, it's like, yes, and that can be said for everything, right? Um, I think I'm just philosophizing for fun here. Like I, I don't, I don't even have an intuition as to whether this stuff should be taken super seriously. It's just fun to toss these things around. It's like, what if experience itself is the substance of reality? It's like, but it, it can, the thing is that it's always that it can feel that way, <laughs> you know? Like, dude, there, there's definitely, you know, I was gonna say we've all had experiences <laughs> of experiencing experience as a substance of reality. We, have, we haven't all, but you know, I wish it on you if you've never had it. But, it's, but that is an experience. And it's like, if, if, if it being an experience is allowed within the answer you're looking for, then sure. But different people, different intuitions looking for different answers might find the fact that it is an experience and experiences arise and fall away. They change, right? You may feel that way for a while, but then not feel that way. Guaranteed, basically, you won't feel that way later. You're gonna get caught up in normality and things like that. Um, other people would find that unsatisfactory, that that's, you know, that sort of dilutes its power as an answer, as some sort of ultimate factor of reality. It's like, all, 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 these feelings can be unbelievably profound, life-changing, and there's huge amounts of refuge and comfort in them, but, and again, I don't know, it's just, feels like it's easy to reify them into something that they're not by trying to really desperately cling to like, this must be the answer, this must be the answer, this must be the answer, you know? But again, it's like, whatever you can do to anything that is bringing you refuge and peace and confidence and joy is, is useful to some extent. Like most things are, it's like, as long as you can carry it lightly, because like, if you cling to it, you're gonna, you know, you can impinge it on other people, when it starts kind of not giving you what you want out of it, you'll be like, oh, but you're supposed to be the fucking thing. And you're like, trying to, you know, you kind of like try to pull yourself up by your brute straps instead of like going with the flow, you know? The way the light hits the clouds, I'm always stunned, says Brushbug. Hell yeah. Yeah, we're all doing a lot of sun staring here. That's good. Very healthy for the eyes to so just stare into the sun. Whew. 
Experiences can't be truth because they change, conflict each other, and often don't last. I did say that. Brute straps, I like that. Did I say brute straps instead of bootstraps? It kind of works either way. It actually kind of works either way. By that criteria, you're saying truth should be permanent and never, conf never be in conflict. Uh, I don't know if you're, if you're pointing at me or at RP. Um, I don't know. For, for my position, I think I probably demonstrated there that I am indeed highly skeptical. I mean, I just don't... You just... Uh, I don't know what an answer would look like, <laughs> you know? It's like there's all sorts of nice discussions to be had and experiences to be had and feelings to be had. But um, to quantify an answer, I just can't imagine it, you know? Kind of dark here, but I have this lamp that's definitely way too close to my eyes. <laughs> Easy now. Don't go hurting your eyes. Do not touch the light bulb to your eyeball. Very bad idea. I like turtles, says Love Gun Wrong. Yeah, I think we can all agree, even in the depths of um, amateur philosophy, that we all love turtles, for sure. Naro says, Bodhisattva Zapata. Don't, don't call me that. You'll fuck up my next meditation. <laughs> Do you have experience organizing art collectives or groups of creatives who are in the post-college phase of life? Do you have anything to share on the topic? I mean, I have in the online realm, like doing online workshops and classes, yeah. Um, I do have experience in that regard. I haven't done it that much in person. I've only done a few in-person events. Um, I do want to do more in the future. Um, yeah, truly to answer that, like I hope to have much more experience in the near future organizing groups of creatives. But um, if I, any advice on that, if that's what you're looking to do, if you're going to start organizing creatives, just try to be clear. Try to be clear about what you're going for. Does that seem too obvious? Does that seem too banal? Um, like be open about what perspective you're coming from, what philosophical viewpoint you're coming from, um, so that people don't have false ex expectations or get confused about what's going on, you know? Like, because there's so many different kinds of artists. And even within artists who think that they are totally aligned on what they're trying to do, if they really sat down and hashed out their directions, their opinions, they'd probably find there's actually tons of points of misalignment because art is individual, you know, deeply, deeply individual. So it's unlikely you're going to agree with uh, all of the artists you're associating with on why you're doing art, what way to do it, what, what should be achieved, all, like everything. There's gonna be tons of dither. So be open about that up front. Try to get people to discuss those things uh, with open hearts and good spirits. And to not like cling to an illusion of like some objectivity there. Some, well, but that, that, then again, you know, it's not my group. So if you want to do that, if you want to try to make it as objective as is possible in a world of uncertainty, then at least be clear that that's what you are going for. And I would highly advise you that if you see someone taking that too seriously, finding it to be maladaptive, you know, limiting themselves, feeling depressed, not wanting to draw because these answers are too solid, you know, their stuff doesn't fit into it. If you would be a good guy, I'd always be willing to return with them to the base level and be like, this is not that serious. Like, it's always, just make your work, you know, be happy, you know.
Sir Bob says, any tips on how to set a price for private mentoring lessons? My university students are asking me to teach them outside the school bubble. I'd love to see them grow, but also be fair with what I charge. No, I mean, for pricing stuff, it's, you know, no. Yeah, it's, 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 it's always going to be what, what you feel comfortable with meeting what they feel comfortable with, you know? It's gonna be different from person to person, from teacher to teacher, from student to student. Um, sliding scales are pretty common in things, you know? You can charge on a sliding scale. Um, people do react to that. I don't have much personal experience with it, but there's lots of contexts where people do that, so. You just tell people, I charge on a sliding scale, you know. I'd like this, but the scale is like this. You know, you could pay this much less, you know. Um, there are also people in the world who are will willing to be sort of supporting me members of situations like that. You know, they, they're in good financial circumstances, and they will be willing to support someone else who can't afford it as much to do it. Um, there are sustaining members of mentorships and things like that, um, classes, retreats, things like that. So be creative about how you're going to structure that and just be flexible, I guess. Um, but yeah, I can't really give a number because what, what works for one person is not, not going to be, it's not going to work for someone else. Do try to charge an amount that you just like feel comfortable doing it, you know, in general, like don't, don't under, don't undercharge, you know, because if you undercharge, even if you, if you do it unskillfully, um, if you don't calibrate it just right, you're not going to be into it enough to give the students the energy that they need. And if that happens, it doesn't matter that they got a deal they're gonna get low energy shitty teaching now. So there is a utility to making sure that you charge enough that you're like, this is worth doing, you know, and you're not just rushing to get it done fast enough such that, you know, it's not taking up too much of your time for too little pay. You wanna avoid that situation. You wanna charge enough that you feel comfortable <sighs> relaxing and spending time with the students and helping them.
monthly payment plans would be a good option. Yeah, I mean, whatever the students are comfortable with. If they're comfortable with it, they're comfortable with it, you know. See a philosophical debate going on about the existence of color as such. We really get into it in these chats. <laughs> Can't help it when you're talking about art. It begs philosophical questions up and down. Goodbye, Estros. I'm going to have to leave soon, folks. It is time for dinner and to prepare dinner. Not in that order. <laughs> Preparations first, then the consumption. So if anyone has any last questions, throw them in the chat. I'm happy to be back streaming. I do love to stream. I remember one day you said your stream attracts people who think too much. Yes, I think that's undeniable. <laughs> I think too much, so definitely going to be the environment that I create, despite my best efforts. <laughs> it's going to seep in inevitably. I should stop drawing so I can actually read final questions. What's your biggest tip in hitting likeness in a portrait or should I just grid it? Um, yeah, gridding it, don't grid it if you're trying to stylize it. But um, uh, if you're just trying to nail it like it is in a photo or reference, gridding it is totally valid uh, and will help you get it. But even with a grid, it can kind of come out not looking like the person. Um, the biggest tip I have is don't, don't just obsess about the features. That is to say the eyebrows, the eyelashes, the eyes, the nose, the lips. Those are important, of course, but most people only think about those and then they <laughs> try and nail the contour and they freak out about it. Um, the likeness of a person's face is very much also about the forms in between all the features, the way cheeks bend, the, the, the nature of the gradations that define the structure of their cheeks, their jaws, their forehead. Is it sudden? Is it fast? Is it soft? Is it slow? Um, if you took a screenshot of my face and you, you know, in Photoshop kind of removed my eyebrows, my eyes, my nose, my lips locked me inside of my flesh cage so that I could not perceive the world. You would still kind of be able to tell it was me. There would still be a likeness of me even without my features. The overall gestalt of my face, of my bone structure, of my head still contributes a huge amount to the likeness. And if you showed it to other people, there'd be some amount of people would be like, isn't that Steven? So that is often left out of 
what people do in a portrait to their detriment because that's, you know, let's say that's 50% of the likeness, they've left off, they have closed their mind to 50% of the likeness. So include the fleshy spaces between the features. Try not to obsess so much. The features are still important, but give honest attention to the spaces between the features. Thank you, RP. I'm gonna try to lightning round these. Steven, I missed you, I missed you too, Luis. Let me go back up to where the... All right. What's your biggest tip in hitting... All right, I got that. How's it going? It's going great. Thanks for streaming, soon. I love you guys in chat. Thank you, William. And yes, the chat is always very good. Games on Mark Wolf says, Stephen, have you ever drawn a food that looks more delicious than any food you've actually eaten? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think I have, no. I'd have to say no to that. I, re I rarely have drawn food. I've, I've had to do it a little bit in like theme park projects. You know, if you need to show meals like at a table, if you're designing a restaurant or something, I've done it there, but never in like a really rigorous way, you know? Um, going through Bridgman right now, do you have a clear idea of what he means by wedging? Not a clear idea, but it's like forms interlocking. Think, all right, perverts, take it easy. But this is that forms, you know, it's like, almost like a yin and yang thing, one into the other, both, it, both penetrating perverts, easy, both forms penetrating each other, not just one overtaking the other, but they both affect each other. You know, that's what I think of as wedging, but I'm not Bridgman. You know, that's just, that's how I understood it while I was reading Bridgman. So the diagram, I always kind of think of that as like forearm. So extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis, this whole unit here, um, including brachial radialis, penetrates into the upper arm. So this is forearm stuff down here. And the upper arm penetrates down into the forearm forms because the elbow form along with the tendons of the triceps and stuff, push down into the forearms territory. So it's like, you've got a rush going up, a rush going down, and they both interlock like that. Easy perverts. All right. There will be more drawing meditations in the future, undoubtedly. I mean, care a lot about that stuff. I, I'm going to talk a lot more about that stuff in the near future. I think that stuff's going to be important. So yeah, I've, I'm writing a lot about it right now. I've been writing a lot. The goofy veneer, <laughs> veneer cannot hide the intellectual explosion that is as a pot of stream. I think the intellectual, I think the intellectual veneer cannot hide the goofy explosion that is a Zapata stream. Goodbye, Domo. I'm happy to be back. Enjoy your drawing for fun. Thoughts on the seminal Watershed album since I left you by the Avalanches? No thoughts. I don't know. I'm sure it's great. Thank you, Magnus. Magnus says, you got a good looking flesh cage, sir. <laughs> it's very good. It is most about capturing the spaces between features. It's a big deal. What's for dinner? Uh, I think uh, white bean kale. Uh, casserole kind of a thing. All right, everybody. I'm out. Glad you told me to calm myself. I'm always here for that. I'm always here for that. All right, everybody. Thank you for drawing with me today. I hope you all have wonderful drawing adventures in your lives. Uh, may you find your ultimate truth, no matter what. No matter what others say. May the truth work for you. <laughs> all right, everybody. Uh, I will see you all soon. I don't know what that's supposed to be. I'll be back. Uh, what's my schedule again? I'll be back Wednesday. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursdays is usually what I do. And I should be back to regular streaming now. So 
We'll see y'all Wednesday. Take care, everybody. Goodbye, RP. Goodbye, Paul Leal H. Goodbye, friend. Doby John. Goodbye, William. Goodbye, Sanzia. Goodbye, Brushbug. Goodbye, Carl Frank. Goodbye, Gabe Ebertschon. Goodbye, Nerdy's Birds. Goodbye, William. Goodbye, Domo. Goodbye, Calador Sharp. There's my wife. <laughs>